Hey, folks, just a friendly reminder that all shows on the Madness Comic Network are produced by their individual hosts and in no way reflect the opinions of the network as a whole. The statements in the following broadcast are not necessarily the opinions of the Madness Comic Network, its staff, sponsors, or contributors. This show is rated TVMA, as are all of them and all those other letters. Viewer discretion is highly advised, and, you know, just do what Doc says. Read that again. Peace, everybody. Hey, yo, it's me, Pops Fan Marmalade. And you're watching the Comics Related Madness Network. Uh huh. So come get some. <laughs> graphic novels, including Nightmare World, Tales of Mystery, Way But Not Dead, uh, all kinds of stuff. And I am super excited for you because you are getting to watch right now, right this moment, out of all the things we're going to be doing, you're getting to enjoy and revel in the Madness Comic Network. And that is awesome. Thank you for being here. City Magazine is just really pulling out all the stops, man. Your guys' production value of this of this magazine has gone insane. I mean, look at the. I mean, I remember when you guys it was black and white. Even when it was black and white, I thought your quality was great. But damn, they have just. I mean, they just really stepping it up and on. Look at this. James Corbett, boys. James Corbett, genuinely cutting. Um, but also funny and obviously just chaotic and, and very fun. I love Flip City. It has brought new types of badassery and integrity to the print medium.
what I think it's the best show that comes out on Monday afternoon we get some great people to come out and join us we come out and tell it like it is in the world of in comics promoting and networking and all that kind of fun stuff today we are going to look at a book that's killing it being killing it it's it's doing pretty freaking good over there gonna go take a look at it but first bring out one of the people involved in this so he can tell us all about it um actually wait a minute no i got something else carrie if, if he shows up carrie carrie if he shows up i, I will i will show him but you know yeah he's gotta show up first uh, hello lou how you doing lou another amazing artist hangs out Harry has craft skills. We love the people in madness. Everybody comes around, they do cool stuff. A lot of people watching all over the place. Twitch, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube. Hello, everybody. And welcome to another episode of The Monday Madness. Today, I have an old friend coming back. I've known this guy for quite a while. This ain't the first time I talked to this guy. Um... Everybody, I want you to welcome Mr. Les Lyndon Garner. What's up, my friend? I don't have no, I don't have no applause track, but there you go. I have returned. <laughs> RJ's I got one of those in his studio. Here. Of course, I'm working from my iPad here, so it's like the most terrible camera angle possible. That's just wonderful. <laughs> you know, it is what it is. We, we, we ain't here to judge the tech skills, bro. Yeah. <laughs> you remember when I started doing this? There you remember go. how it looked? Oh yeah. <laughs> I go back and I look at some of that old stuff just to remind myself how ridiculous oh, I yeah. was when I first started doing this. <laughs> yeah. I do that with my work all the time. But we've had a blast, haven't we? Haven't we? Well, so I know you Sometimes. You know what I'm saying. When you're doing this. I've worked myself into the ground sometimes is what I've done. <laughs> I understand that too. Uh, so tell me before we pull it up and show people because the visual kills it. Go ahead and give people a little taste of what they're about to see. Well, what's going on? What I've got rolling right now is a book that's literally been about 20 years in the making called homestead and uh, the writer on this is dirk manning who a lot of you probably know from uh mystery and uh i oh, think uh on mystery and and hope and all these other books i mean he's got a ton of stuff out all uh, kinds of stuff yeah oh, <laughs> just yeah. the way you said it in the intro right is this and this and this oh this all kinds yeah. of stuff <laughs> Yeah, D Dirk's a busy boy. And uh, those of you who don't know me might, or some of you might remember me from a book of mine called Apocalypse Girl mm -hmm. that came out a couple of years ago and, and did pretty well. Did, I think that's how we met, isn't it? Yeah, it, it did It did really well considering it came out a month before COVID. So, <laughs> you know, that I had like 35 show, shows booked for that year and got to do one. It's terrible. Yeah. But uh, the book still did well, and uh, so that was a thing. So Homestead, uh, before I find myself digging into ancient history and talking about it that way, I'm sure we'll get to that later, uh, the book itself is a horror, horror story, werewolf horror story set during the westward expansion out in Lakota territory. And 
really focuses on the conflict between these two families, basically two families. Um, one who have received uh, a land grant through the Homestead Act from the government, and the other being the Lakota who they run into there. And as Dirk would put it, this is the best way to put it, he says it's, it's a story about how far two families will go to preserve their way of life. So uh, I love this story. I personally think it's the best thing Dirk's ever written. And I told him that when I, when I saw the scripts, especially when I saw the script to, it was originally going to be four issues, but then we decided to put it all together as one book, uh, as one big book. So uh, when, when I saw the script to issue or what became chapter four, I, I immediately had to get on the horn to Dirk and tell him that I was like, this, this is the best thing you've ever written. It's like, I don't even have to have read you know, more than a little bit of what you've written in the past to know this, this is the best thing you've ever written. And I, I quite a bit of what he's by that. <laughs> I, I stand by that. And, uh, you know, I, I feel like, um, it's probably the best artwork that I've ever done on many levels and not the least of which, because, uh, in the middle of, uh, doing issue number one, I had a double stroke. And was laid up in the hospital for six weeks. And I kept working on the book while I was in the hospital. And I was fully left side paralyzed and kept working on the book the entire time. So, because I'm right handed, I was still able to draw. I was like, screw it. I'm going to keep drawing. Keep drawing, yeah. So, you know, and, and so this book came to mean a whole lot to me just from, uh, <laughs> you know, shit, it's, it's a probably a Freudian slip. Horror, horror. <laughs> horror. I mean, I horror. Go, horror. <laughs> yeah. horror. It's like you're gonna have a whore or a burger. You know, which is a whore or a burger. Yeah, she she just likes to tease me. She, <laughs> now, now she found somebody else she can mess with too. We love you, Carrie. We love you. <laughs> I, I hate the word horror. Because it always, there's no way, there's no way you can say it correctly without sounding pompous. Uh huh. Exactly. Exactly. So, but, well, she's from the other side of the pond, so. Oh man. It, oh, no. it, it reminds me if you've ever seen that uh, the cartoon uh, uh, drawn together. Yes. Th there's this one, this one episode that focuses on Foxy. Foxy Love. And he keeps cutting to this British guy. And and the British guy, he's like, and that's how Foxy became a whore. <laughs> Just like that. Just like yeah. that. <laughs> uh, yeah, Homestead is uh, it's a wild book. I mean, there's a lot of heart in this book. And uh, it gets bloody. It gets rough. Good. good. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a horror book. It is. It is a horror book, but uh, yeah, I, I love uh, <laughs> horror, horror or burger. Which will you have, horror or burger? Is it a scary hamburger, or is it you know a prostitute or a sandwich? You know, horror or burger. I tell you, man, I might have to go register horrorburger.com now just cause just now see back cause... back when I was young and back when I was young and impetuous, I would have said something like, I'll have that horn make me a burger. <laughs> <laughs> terrible, terrible, terrible. <laughs> but I mean I'm talking about an actual horn, not a You're talking about a whoa. Nice lady that I was saying something mean about. I'm talking about <laughs> And and and, you know. Oh my god, this went straight to hell real fast. What can I tell you? It's you know, I don't hide who I was, man. I'm not yeah. that guy now, but I don't know who I was. Mm. Uh, you know, there was a time and a place for everything, and it was called the 90s. Well, yeah, kind of <laughs> <laughs> for me, it was kind of this the 80s, you know, but yeah. Well, you got a few years on me there, I guess. I, I can say that I've had a good time. 
you know, if I get to like, if, if tomorrow I'm laying on my left deathbed, you know, I've only got an hour left. I'll, mm -hmm. I'll be able to fill that hour up with some good memories. I won't be sitting there going, man, I wish I'd done that. I didn't get to do that. I'll be looking back going, yeah, I had a great freaking time. <laughs> it was a wild ride, man. Uh, that's what I try to, I always try to make fun. That's, that's all I do. Um, yeah. Mm -mm. <laughs> see, the harder you try. It sounds like horror, it's, the more it sounds like horrors. <laughs> the harder you try. Horror. The more, horror. You know? horror. Or, or, uh, or, or, you almost have to put an apostrophe in the middle of it. Oh, or, that's crazy. that's crazy. We do have a show here called the Horror Movie Club that we do on Thursday nights. I don't know why Carrie doesn't pop into that. Maybe it's because it's too late, too late at night for her or something. Maybe. Man, if she popped into that one, it'd be horrible. She'd just be, she'd be getting everybody on the panel, you know. <laughs> So, what we're going to do now, how long is this video on this thing? Uh, depends on which one you're showing. There's one that I think is 30 seconds and one that I think is 90. All right. Well, we're, we're if they're different, we'll show them both. I'm talking about the one that's on the top of the page right there. Uh, I think that's the full trailer that should be 90 cool. seconds. Yeah, I try to keep it brief. We're going to check it out right now if you're good with that. Do it. All right. Hello, friends. I'm Dirk Manning, the writer and co-creator of Homestead. And I'm Wes Garner, co-creator and artist on Homestead. Homestead is a Native American Western werewolf graphic novel about how far two families will go to protect their way of life and their loved ones. Joining Les and I on this project are colorist Colin Johnson, letterer Dave Lenz, Lakota creative consultant Ralph Blackhawk, editor Regina Joe, and of course, publisher Sourcepoint Press. As always, friends, thank you so much for supporting the projects that I'm involved with, with my amazing collaborators, and thank you for supporting Good Horror. Source point press, people. <laughs> yeah. Yep. I see them guys every time I go to a con, pretty much. Yeah, they're out and about quite a bit. So, uh, let me find you. Okay, here we go. $13,000, 231 backers, 28 days to go. Yep. Yeah, this is what we've done in like three days. That's got to feel pretty freaking good. It doesn't suck. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, I'm I'm really hoping uh... <laughs> oh my god. It's yeah, less it's with an just, L. There you go. It's just like less, no less. It's a common mistake. It's like people always sticking a D in my last <laughs> name. I'm like, there ain't no D in that name. Uh, hold on though. I'm looking at my keyboard and the W is way over here and the L is way over here. <laughs> yeah. I can't tell you how many times I get called Wes Gardner, <laughs> and it will irritate the crap out of me every time. Well, Less with an L, Garner, no D involved. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so you went through some serious shit, like you said, you had two strokes. You've been, you know, you fought back, like, like, and I mean, you guys don't understand, dude. Seriously, fought back couldn't use the other arm at all basically you know um, yeah it's the the left arm is i mean it's here now and i can raise it up and do some things with it so it's <laughs> what do you mean it takes you to an error page hmm all right look. what's up i'm going to do it again 
because we need to take you to an air page. No, no, I just clicked on it. It took me right where I'm going. It took me right here. Carrie, trolling me right now? Oh, in the description? All right, well, I'll fix that one. The one in the chat works. Hit it. Hmm. Hit the one in the chat. I will fix the one in the description, I promise. <laughs> I am going to forward this over to uh, Mr. Dirk and see if he might pop on. I already did that. <laughs> oh, oh, well, there's that. I did. I sent it to him. Um, he, I he see may, what the, may show up. Who knows? I see what happened. Okay, now the one in the in the in the description should work. Mm -mm -mm. Okay. Well, mm -mm -mm. whoo! So bossy. Today. Yeah. <laughs> did she just say I'm so bossy today? Did she? Did she really say that? Les? Is that what I'm reading right there? Hmm. Is it? Is that? Is that? Hold on. I think I that's what it said. I think she said that I'm being so bossy. Is so that, bossy today. Is that what that said? Seriously? Man, I, I don't know why people would think that. Won't you get in trouble if the boss shows up? Oh no, it's a boss here. <laughs> hey, wait, I'm the boss. That's right. I can be boss. I'm the boss. Mm -mm. <laughs> All right, so we fixed the uh, the description. And the link should work now. Thank you. Thank you for telling me, look, Harry. Appreciate you. Um, Rex is streaming, and I'm trying to share the campaign. Okay, well, now you can. Now you can. It should work. Share. Share the campaign. Yes, that's, that's why we do this. Everybody knows that. That's why we do this. And if Absolutely. you got rich, use it, people. Drop links, share links, all that networking stuff. It's what the platform's here for. So let's get deep into this, bro. You're, um, that shit's just amazing, dude. Thank you, man. I don't mean to say shit. I mean, that fucking art is just amazing. <laughs> well, I appreciate it. Yeah, I, I, so I would get busted my chops on this damn book. Dude, look. I'm just when you when it when it first popped up, I was like, damn, who's doing that? And then I saw it's Dirk. I was like, oh, it's Dirk. I wonder who's drawing that. <laughs> <laughs> and then I scroll down and I see your name, and I'm like, oh man, I know this guy. Look at this. <laughs> Look, yeah, this this was fun. The uh backstory for how I ended up doing this. Hello, Amber. The backstory for hell how I ended up doing this. Actually, the very first time Dirk and I met was, uh, let's see, 11 years ago at Tricon in West Virginia. And I'm sitting up, this is back when I first was shopping around for a publisher for Apocalypse Girl. And I'm set up across the way from him. We're looking across the, the aisle at each other. And uh, I go introduce myself. He gives me his card. I actually still have that business card sitting over here on my desk. And uh, he comes, well, thank you. Thank you, Lou, Lou Pons. Okay. Mm -hmm. Dirk, uh, Dirk. We got, we got some talent around here, bro. I'm just saying. <laughs> Dirk comes over to the table and starts flipping through my portfolios and everything. And just probably, maybe not the first thing he ever said to me, but close to the first thing Dirk ever said to me, the first thing I remember him ever saying to me, is he's looking through my stuff and he just stops and looks and says, I've got a book. You are the guy who needs to draw it. And I'm like, tell me more. What is it? And then he pitches me the idea for Homestead. Mm -hmm. And I was like, uh, you had me at werewolves. You had me at Western. When do we start? <laughs> and uh, so he and I started to develop this friendship that actually turned into the gateway through which well thank you thank you yeah the colors did a good job on this the uh but that that turned into uh, that friendship turned into the gateway through which uh apocalypse girl would get picked up by source point press right 
And so Dirk and I just, I mean, we stayed friends. We did some shows and stuff. We've, we've done things together as part of Source Point Press for a few years now. And all the while, pretty much every time I'd see him, I'm like, hey, Dirk, where's that Homestead project at? And 11 years, I pecked at him about it. <laughs> and then uh, probably about let's see, a year ago, I had the stroke. So a year before that, about two, two and a half years ago, he says, you ready to do Homestead? I'm like, dude, I've been ready to do it for nine years. <laughs> so, uh, you know, it finally came around and he sent me some scripts and I read them and I said, I was like, this is the best thing you've ever written. I was like, and I'm going to draw the hell out of it. So we, you know, crossed our T's and dotted our I's and got everything in place to, to work on it together and uh, started work on it. And then I had a stroke or two. Uh, it was a double stroke. It was, I mean, I just say I had a stroke, but it was two strokes in one day. And then pretty much all of life got thrown out of kilter pretty damn hard. Uh, but I, I kept working, kept pounding and we still got the book done. I actually, even through the stroke, I still got the book done. Um, by the time that we had originally set, as a deadline for me to get it done. Like not even, not even having a double stroke would stop me from making my deadline. That's so, it. you know, muscled through it, did what I had to do. And then, you know, it's, it's, it's wild, man. It's really wild. So, and then, you know, through all the ups and downs of the comic book business over the last few years and everything, it it just feels good to have this thing finally done and then to see it getting the reception that it's getting on Kickstarter is nice. Yeah, I I was blown away. I was like, man, that thing jumped quick, quick. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, like I, I had to, I had come out when it made its first goal. I did a little live stream. I was like, hey everybody, you know, cool. We we made our goal. Yay. And because of that, I'm gonna do a sketch on this stream. And one of the backers is going to, you know, one, any of the backers who are watching the stream, I'm going to choose from you randomly and they, this will be added to what you get. And uh, so I did the sketch. Somebody won it. Great. I was like, and I was like, and this will teach me. I, was, I said, so I was like, tell y'all what, every time we cross a stretch goal, I'll do another one of these streams. Well, then it was like, dink, dink, dink. Dink, you know, just starts like uh, I didn't think we'd cross the stretch goal that night. So uh, thank you, Lou. So uh, my my significant other and I, Janice, she uh, she and I decided, oh, well, we're going to celebrate getting our, our funding. So we go out for dinner. Actually, we go we go for ice cream first and then dinner, as is the Dirk Manning ritual. Right. And. Uh, so I do a little thing with my phone and I'm like on, on there, got my ice cream. Yay. We made it. We made it. And then I check and I'm like, Oh crap. While I'm sitting here having this ice cream, we just passed our first stretch goal. Well, that's awesome. I was like, looks like I got a stream to do. <laughs> and so I pop on and I'm, everything's all super happy and all that. So then we leave and we go to dinner and I'm checking when we're at dinner. I'm like, Holy crap. We just passed the second stretch goal. I was like, looks like I got two streams to do tomorrow. Yeah. I come home when I go to bed and I wake up and we passed, I think, a third and fourth overnight. And I'm like, y'all are killing me. I'm going to have to do like four or five of these damn streams today. <laughs> so I ended up burning out. Uh, of course, I haven't but This is the, what it's about, my friend. I haven't pulled the fringes off the sides of these yet, but uh, I'll, I'll hold these up to the camera. So, like, I think they're laying here in order. So there was this guy ooh, that was ooh, that was done on a live stream. Ooh, and ooh, then ooh. let's see. This was done on a stream. There we go. Thank you, dude. Oh, there's more. Then this one was done on stream. But wait, there's more. Let's see, this one was done on stream. And then this one. 
Damn. So all of those, the, the side of the paper is perforated for that fringy stuff to come off of. So, so yeah, are you but, saying you have a YouTube channel that people can subscribe to? Uh, there's the Sixus One Media YouTube channel, which I, I really don't post to as much as I used to, uh, especially since I've just been drawing my ass off over this past year. But uh, yeah, that and I, I, I was doing most of these streams on Facebook. Ah, okay. I'm, I'm going to throw a little something at you because I know that the Sunday time slot for the draw stream doesn't always work for you. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, let me tell you a little something, something, brother. Um, <laughs> look, I would gladly give you a weekly slot to do a draw stream. In the oh, network. Lord. You can oh, broadcast that would be out of our network to all our dis different destinations and whatnot. And I'd gladly give you a time slot for that. Oh, man. We should. Well, we get off of this thing. We'll talk about that because I'm 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 actually very interested in that. Cool, uh, that'd cool, be kind of cool. Most so. excellent. Oh, um, see, now look, they're coming after me in Facebook now. Carrie's coming after me in Facebook. Mm -hmm. Yeah, fa Facebook is where most of my engagement is at. Oh, thank you, Lou. Yes, yes, Bernie very much. So. from those wolves. Well, that's actually uh, when. Uh, Use FMC. I don't know what if my comic. That's this is a Dirk. Oh, Dirk. Dirk has oh. a, a huge following already on uh, on Kickstarter. But I'm going to to feel Dirk out about maybe doing a storefront type setup on Fun My Comic where he can put all the books he has that are available up there. Right. I've That's I've just, looked at Fun My Comic. It looks pretty good. Yeah, um, I, 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 go through I would it. be down for going there. Yeah, I go through Fun My Comic. Uh, I try to do it every Monday at noon and go through. Um, going through today, I saw a lot of funded campaigns. Nice. A lot of money being spent over there, you know? I mean, for, for the amount of time it's been in existence and whatnot, I'm, I'm pretty impressed with what they got going on over there. I, I was looking at it a month or so ago, and it looked really interesting to me. I, I've, I've got a couple other things cooking and some of it will probably show up there. If not there exclusively, it'll be like there as well as Kickstarter. So, right, you know, right, I, yeah. I've, I've, I've been floating around the periphery of doing crowdfunding for a long time. And this is, see, this is the second project of dirt that I'm involved in. Uh, I did a chapter in butts in seats Mm -hmm. The Tony Watch Schiavone seats, story. Wrestling, wrestling, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah I, I did, I did, uh, I did a chapter in that, and uh, oh, mm -hmm. let's see. And then, of course, I think uh, was it last month or month before? It's been a couple months. Um, uh, Rich Davis and the guys did the the Kickstarter for the first portion of Reign of Dracula. So I, I'm just now, yeah, like I personally haven't ran any of these Kickstarters. But I'm really paying close attention to what everybody does behind the scenes with them, and I'm learning a hell of a lot and getting ready to uh, to drop some interesting things. Cool, cool. So um, John's long box. John also has a YouTube channel. Um, John's got Jim Shooter on Wednesday, guys. Ooh. You know, it's, you know what what sucks about that though. We got Doc's Coffee Shop on Wednesday. <laughs> I got to work. On a different show while he's interviewing Jim Shooter. But I'm also uh, talking to Jim's agent, have been for a couple of weeks now, about getting him over here on the Madness for a show. So um, oh, congrats, John. Is, he's a nice guy. I've talked to him in person. You know, he's like, uh, yeah, that's a legend right there. So you know, yeah. check that one out, guys. Um, I'm not saying don't watch Doc's show, but at the same time, you know, you're going to have to watch one of them on the replay. <laughs> I, Jim Jim Shooter was at the helm of what I believe to be the best era of Marvel yes. ever. Yes, yes, without a doubt. Oh my God, Lou Ponza is fortunate enough to have Bernie as a friend. Let me tell you, Lou, um, when when Dirk first, I mean, eleven years ago, when Dirk first looked at my portfolio, um, I remember him saying after you know pitching Homestead to me, he's like. I want you on this because it really looks like you've got a, 
a deep Bernie Wrightson influence. And I'm like, yes, I, I absolutely worship at the altar of Bernie. Bernie Wrightson is, is arguably, you know, like, like in, in conversations, more almost academic sort of, which saying academic comic book conversation sounds funny to people, but you know, there is an academic side to this stuff <laughs> to it. And, uh, you know, in an academic conversation about comics, you know, would I say Bernie was the, was one of the most influential artists ever? He's one of, but there's pro I could probably name about 10 guys who mm. realistically had a heavier impact and, you know, and that's not to diss Bernie, but Bernie's my favorite. Well, I mean, what Bernie did was, I mean, are there people that do stuff in the same style? I, I like Tim, Tim and Joe Vigil. I like what they yep. do. It's got that same, you know, crazy horror feel, right? That's, and that's what we like. Okay. You know, Tim Vigil, Vince Locke, um, yeah. you know, there's a, there's a, there's a little school of guys who I kind of think, I mean, even uh, Liam Sharp, Liam, Liam absolutely channels the hell out of Bernie on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, when, when we finally, years went by and we finally started on this, Dirk says to me right at the outset, he's like, I want you to dig deep and channel as much of your inner Bernie as you can. And I'm like, yes, sir, we're on it. <laughs> but now I'm looking at this beautiful horse. Thank you. Now that I, I know a lot of people that can draw, they can't draw a horse. Dude. <laughs> well, oh, I, I attribute a great deal of that to being from Eastern Kentucky. Because <laughs> You you come out of Kentucky, you better know your horses, right? Right. That's just all there is to it. We're the we're the horse capital of the world, and and I, I know if I draw a horse in a book, folks back home are going to see it, and if it's wrong, they are going to tear me a new asshole. <laughs> okay, question time. How okay. many pages? How many pages? Um, I hundred pages. It, okay. I think it comes in at a hundred pages. Right. Plus right. there's some extras that, and there's extras that will get unlocked. Uh, may have already been, I don't, I don't even know where we're at in unlocking stuff. I know there's more to come. So this thing just gets thicker and thicker. Good. Good. That's what we like to hear. So there you go. Hardcover collector's edition, $35 plus with free shipping, includes all the stretch goals. And uh, yeah, it's 100 pages, hardcover. What can you do? Uh, the basic book gets you the mass market soft cover trade paperback edition of Homestead with free U.S. shipping and stretch goals, obviously, right? Uh, 25 bucks. 25 bucks free shipping. This it's the Brian Polito way. 25 bucks free shipping. 25 bucks free shipping. <laughs> I don't know how many times I ordered like just the homage cover of the Lady Death. A whole bunch of them up there, right? The homage cover. Just the homage cover. That's all I want. That's 25 bucks free US shipping. Okay. You know, for your eight bucks shipping, you're getting, you know, you're getting the book for a decent price. Uh, this is huge though. This is a lot bigger than a Lady Death floppy, guys. It's a, it's it's a hefty little book. I mean, uh, yeah. it was originally going to be a four issue limited series, but uh, <laughs> he's from We're, Kentucky. I'm not. I'm from we Kentucky. don't say stuff the same. We just don't. There, there's differences when you like. Where are you from, <laughs> hmm? Where are you from? I was born in Minneapolis. I lived there till I was about <laughs> if fifteen and seven months. And Fun fact: Phoenix. my first time ever in Minneapolis was uh, one week after I got out of the hospital from the strokes. Mm. Yeah, I, I got out of the hospital, and an associate of mine said, "Hey, I got a show that would like to invite you to come up, give you a free table." They're they're interested in what's happening with you and would love to love to have you come up and speak. And I went a week after I got out of the hospital. It was on that trip that I threw away the quad cane they had me walking on. 
and that was in uh, in Minneapolis. Minneapolis. See, I was only there till I was like 15, because as soon as I got my license, I was like, okay, I've shoveled enough snow. I moved my ass to Phoenix. <laughs> I, mm. and I stayed in Phoenix for 35 years. And just that last summer I was there, man, it was just like, I couldn't even go outside. It was so freaking hot. Mm. So stifling. Like, you know, it's like, I couldn't even go outside. And I was a guy who played golf and softball and all the time, you know, every summer, all year, every year for 34 years. That 35th summer just kicked my ass. So I left <laughs> and I went to Texas of all places. Like that's going to be any better, right? Yeah, so, really. Yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe yeah. maybe northern Texas would be a little better. Yeah, I was in D uh, Garland. You mm. know? But see, my problem is people in Texas don't eat much. They don't like meat. Yeah. They don't like meat. They don't like meat. Um, ladies and gentlemen, we have somebody in the backstage. I have to play a little intro here. Just a little short part of this intro. Cause it's so just sit right down, relax, open your ears real wide and say, give it to me straight, doctor. I can take it. Wow. <laughs> the doctor is in, baby. What's up, doc? <laughs> what's up? What's up? What's up, Les? Hello. Um... So somewhere during this show, I have something special I need to show Doc. Oh, I, yeah. I, I, I re yeah, Doc, I, I got some stuff to show you. Uh, I just want you to know that, that this is, you know, we love you. That's why it's happened, okay, because we love you. Uh, I have to stop sharing this for a second. I have to share this other thing. Oh, this he is so cute. Um, have you have you seen this guy, Doc? I have seen this guy. Have you seen you have seen this guy? Yeah. Um well there's there's something I need to show you. Okay, there he is. He's got a um Lori, <laughs> Ellie, Ellie's eyeball in his mouth, right? <laughs> okay, and now oh there he is where he <laughs> comes the door. <laughs> oh, Carrie is amazing. <laughs> I asked her to do a photo shoot for me, you know. Check him out. We're, we're in Doc's fedora. Is that awesome or what? Hmm. <laughs> um, the Swift. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay, I'm Cheers, done. I just, you know, Cheers, um, we're saving that for you, Doc. We, we couldn't. <laughs> I was like, I gotta show it to him on a live stream. You know, um, mm. prom wearing your fedora is awesome, though. That's that's good yeah. stuff, is what it is. <laughs> now I want to get back into this. Hold on. Hey, what you want to know, man? Oh, I lost your audio. Oh, oh, what do you mean, lost my audio? Yeah, went 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 quiet for a minute. Okay, it's back though. You're good. Yeah, and it's back now. Doc. Were you watching any of this? Have you seen any of this? I, I just got back, walked in the oh. door, sat out. Oh. Holy cow, this looks good. Oh, thank you. Oh, I did that. Oh, oh. nice. Oh. oh, oh, look, I tip my hat, man. I, I don't draw horses, they're, they're anatomical abominations. <laughs> I told you, I told you. you. Rocked it. Uh, <laughs> you rocked it. Thank Dude. you, man. The funny thing is, actually, because the Reign of Dracula Kickstarter came out before this Kickstarter, but this book was finished before Reign of Dracula was finished, uh, the first okay. couple. And uh, and I remember telling him, telling Rich on Reign of Dracula, I was like, man, after doing Homestead, I really don't want to have to draw another damn horse for a while. Right. And what does he do but hand me a script that has a two-page spread in it with a horse right in the damn middle. <laughs> I was like, Rich, it's like, we don't like this crap. It's like, it's another damn horse. But I did it. I did some of this horror art. But I was... Killed a giant cockroach in his kitchen when he moved to Texas. Oh, my God. I... I met Bernie once, Lou, uh, back around 95 when I was just a, a, a wee seedling growing up in this stuff. And uh, 
I think I was see 95. I, I had just turned like 20 years old when I met him mm-hmm. and he was so nice and reviewed my stuff, looked at my portfolio. I saw him again a couple other times after that. And it really was, a, a, you know, his work was a big influence and his input was a big influence. Yeah. Yeah. So, and the fact that he's a hell of a nice guy is a good influence. Too. Oh, he was such a gentleman, man. You know, and that, there's, it seemed to me looking back in my younger days of, with this stuff, like there was, there was like no in between. I never met anybody in this business who wasn't either a complete gentleman or a complete asshole. Absolutely. One or right. the other. Absolutely and, right. And it was, and I'll, I'll, I'll be honest. What I met was about equal parts, one or the other. It was like 50, 50 hit or miss, whether somebody was a jerk or whether they were a good guy. Yep. So, you know, that's, that's when I learned, you know, I learned the hard lesson of sometimes you did, sometimes you might not want to risk meeting your heroes. So, and John Byrne, I'm talking to you. Yeah. My, uh, my nicest meet was George Perez. Just one hell of a nice down to earth guy. I, I, I wish I could have met George. He, one of his last shows, I was still living in Cincinnati and one of his last shows was in Cincinnati. Um, and, uh, because of some scheduling issues, I, I just couldn't be there. Yeah. And I already had like, uh, the new team Titans one through five, all signed by, uh, by Marv. And I was like, man, I really want these. I want these signed by George. George was a big influence on me as a kid. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, you know, that one didn't get to happen. Yeah. Yeah. Some, I mean, like I remember Bernie was super nice back in the day. Uh, Mike Mignola was really super cool. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, the, one of the, one of the more hilarious guys was Dave Sim. And uh, so Mike Mignola and Dave Sim were, were there on a, like sitting sign. They were all next to each other, signing stuff. Those two with John Byrne sitting next to him. And this was like 1995. Mm-hmm. And, John was going to, Byrne was going to sign 300 signatures. He'll do 300. No more. And they gave me a ticket. So I'm in line and I've got my days of the future past. And I'm like, okay, cool, cool. Just, it's like, you know, he's got a reputation. So just go up. Yes, sir. No, sir. Thank you, sir. Be, be nice. Do your thing. So I wait and I wait. And this is after I have hustled my butt off all night. I would have been in line earlier, but I was hustling all night to show my portfolio to people. Because right. this is 95 when I'm I'm still, you know, young and trying to get more and more work. And uh, so I've pushed it off to the last minute. And finally, I'm like, all right, I'm in line. And I get up and the person in front of me, he signs them that stands up and goes, okay, that was 300. Yeah. Nobody behind me. That was the thing. If there were a line of people behind me, I'd been like, oh, yeah, he can't do one more because then everybody thinks he's going to do it. No, I was the last one. The place was clearing out. Mm-hmm. But he would not do that one more. But one more. I turned around, I looked behind me, and I, I like threw my hands up. I was like, dude, it's just one more. It's just one, one kid here, you know, one 20 year old kid who loves you and nobody else. And he's like, nope, I said 300. That's it. And uh, I, I wish I could remember. I remember uh, Mike Mignola said something real snotty to him about it. And uh, and then asked me, he's like, you know, hey, kid, you, you got any things for me? I was like, yeah, I do have stuff for you. He's like, come on over here. So he signs a bunch of my books and does some little, little stuff in there. And then Dave Sim is like, hey, Mike, while he's doing that, He's like, you got a, you got a uh, Cerebus in there? I was like, yes, I do. Here you go. He's And he's like, well, here. And, and Dave pulls the backing board at, out of it and looks over at, at John Byrne, and he said something real confrontational to him. I can't remember what, but I remember it. Like, it pissed him off enough that John just kind of goes, hmm, and walks <laughs> off. And then Dave takes the backing board out of that and does a drawing of Cerebus on there for me. Mm. Says here, kid. He's like, 
Uh, I remember what he said. He looks over at, at John, John Byrne, and as he's starting to draw on my on my uh, backing board, he's like, "Well, I'm no John F. and Byrne, but maybe this will make up for some people being assholes." <laughs> and uh, I was nice. like, "Yeah," I was just like, I was "Like, screw you, Byrne." Yeah, you know, like forever. Like no, no, no doubt about it. Yeah. Now, Carrie, Carrie had a question back here about international. Is there international shipping? International shipping on this? Uh, do you ship outside the U.S.? That's oh, I am not sure. Dirk is the mm -hmm. guy to ask about that, and he couldn't be here tonight. But uh, I'm mm -hmm. sure that uh, oh, I will. And that one says anywhere in the world. So yeah, anywhere in the world, it does. It does say it will go. It just doesn't say how much. You're going to have to go pledge and do the thing, and it'll show yeah. you how much. Yeah, it'll calculate the international for you once you. But it is there, Kerry. It is there, international. I, I, I promise we'll figure out a way to get you hooked up. See, mm -hmm. and that, that's the great thing about it is even if you don't include it in your campaign, you can still work those things out. Yeah. You know, I mean, I had a friend that was in Canada and the people didn't ship to Canada. And I was like, well, have them send it to me and then I'll ship it to you. Yeah. Right? And I did it for it. And then a couple months later, I got this awesome sketch cover of Super Pops mm. with Electra. You know, which is like, <laughs> Electra's like my favorite you know, female character, and and it's going, oh, super pop, you're my hero, and it's like, you know, because I just helped her out, get a book she wanted. Mm. Y'all got friends, you know, yeah. work together. There's always <laughs> yeah, I've, I've had to, uh, I've had to figure out shipping on some Apocalypse Girl stuff a couple years ago to a uh, dude who is probably my biggest fan, who lives in Singapore. Nice. <laughs> I'm like, what the actual hell is this? And yeah, that's yeah, that's that's an easy ship, no problem. <laughs> that's Rick an empty ship going back. Singapore. I mean, and, and dude, dude was down. He was he was understanding. He totally. He's like, yeah, I know. I'm gonna pay more for stuff. I was like, yeah, but uh, here you go. So I, I made sure to like throw him some sketches and stuff in, try to sweeten it up for him a little bit because you know because that's how I roll with things. I was around the corner less from uh, Ben Edlin and Jeff Smith at a con back mm. in the 90s, about the same time you're talking about. And I'm going to tell you, those two guys got to riffing. And they were two of the funniest people I've ever heard. I was I was not able to just control myself. I, I don't even remember the jokes. When they had me rolling. I was laughing mm. so hard. So the just trade that. paperback of this 100-plus page extravaganza is twenty five dollars the soft cover trade? You can get wow. the cover for thirty five. You can get double shot on a beach for fifty. Mm. And there's if you scroll on down. So like the uh, th now this is this is something I'm really proud of. See that little that little wolf head bust there? Mm -hmm. I sculpted that. Very and nice. That, that gets really produced nice. out of my shop. So nice three D stuff. And if you scroll on down to the biggest, the biggest tier down there, you'll see there's a full, I forgot how tall it is, but uh, I don't know if it says on there, but it's like a full, it's at least, I think, an eight inch statue, if not tall. Nice. Tall. And with that, if you get one of those, we're only doing 13 of that. Uh, 13 inches, 13 yeah, inches tall. Yeah, 13 inches, 13 of them. And uh, they're they're all painted and everything, hand painted by me. Mm. And I sculpted them, produce them in my shop. So that's you know, like that that's one of those things. I just I I personally take a lot of pride in, in the idea that you know it's like that if you buy this and you get the collectible pieces that go with it, they're not just collectibles that we hired somebody to do. Because I mean, as cool as that is, that that's fine. But how often can you get a book? Where the guy who drew the book also sculpted the stuff that you can get with it. Right, right. So, what did you sculpt that in, Les? I used the ZBrush primarily to sculpt. Mm. 
but yeah, I've been outside of comics. I've done three D modeling and animation work since the late nineties. Nice, nice. It's good looking work, man. Thanks. So right there, you got the wolf pack. You can get the bust. You got the skin marker. You can get the shirt. You got to give me everything. You can get both original art hunters. Get oh some yeah. Art. Yeah, that that one, the, the Art Hunters one is, uh, you know, that's obviously limited to, you know, a, a select set of pages and all that. But there are, you know, the original pages are, go with this. Hang left. And again, 13. I like the number 13. I like that you use the number 13. Uh, Dirk, Dirk's got this whole numerical theme around everything that just kind of cracks me up a little bit. But apparently all his people know it. It's like part of his branding. Mm-hmm. It's it's kind of like I mean thirteen has always been a significant number for the madness as well. Mm-hmm. No doubt. Well, it was twenty thirteen when I met him. There you go. So yeah, the comic shop starter pack. We got oh, here yeah. three copies of Homestead Kickstarter exclusive hardcover edition and three copies of the Homestead trade paperback for one hundred dollars. So seems to me like you know that's that's about saving seventy bucks or something to get that. Yeah, we're trying to make sure we show a lot of love to the to the shop owners out there because I, I I really would like to see this on on some shelves. We do we do have some friends that own stores. That's that's one thing I like about the madness too. We we try to get encourage that. I mean, I tell people all the time, put a retail tier on there. It didn't take you nothing but three minutes if nobody buys one. Yeah, well, but if somebody buys one, you just got 10 books gone or whatever, right? Um, yeah. Always have a retail tier there. And we'll always tell people it's there. You know, I mean. <laughs> well, those those retailers who, you know, it's like people don't realize the, the, the BS on the end of the retailers and the stuff that they have to go through with everybody. So yeah. uh, if we can offer something for retailers that makes it better for them, you know, a better deal for them to get our stuff in. Cause when our stuff, when I, when my stuff gets to sit on that shelf, then, then it's actually able to go toe to toe with, you know, all these other, uh, you know, yep. other companies, all the mainstream companies and stuff like that. And I mean, not to not to be a jerk about it, but I feel like especially when you look at the cover of this book, it deserves to sit next to those. You know, it, it deserves to be seen next to Absolutely. those. Absolutely. Have a chance. Absolutely. Well, another thing a lot of people really don't consider, and that's during COVID, a lot of comic stores were closed. And that's why Kickstarter and Indiegogo had the boom at the time. Everybody was buying and selling books online, Amazon, where eBay everywhere, right? And that all boomed. Okay, but then COVID went away and all the comic stores opened up. People started going back to their comic store and now they're looking for these indie books that aren't there. Yeah. You know, you go into your comic store, you just tell them, hey, yo, look, they got a retail tier on this one. I would really like to get this. I think some of the other customers in your store would probably like this. You should get it and put it on the shelf. But you got to talk to your store, the, the people who order the books at your store. Not the 18-year-old kid that's there for his weekly paycheck. The people who do the ordering, you got to talk to them. What's up, Rosales? What's happening? Rosales Comics. Right? Yeah, nope. come on. We're on the drawstring a couple weeks ago. It was the first time we got to meet him. Good dude. Mm-hmm. Like him. Uh, Lou, Lou is also an amazing artist. Um, dude, I, I don't know if you've seen this, Les, but Lou jumped into the uh, RPG game and drew Dante and Jerry. Oh, cool. <laughs> Very cool. <laughs> From Skeptic Inc., the Ghostbusters, you know, or <laughs> whatever, you know. Um, <laughs> so, hey, yeah. Pops. Pops, I'm being summoned away, so I'm going to bounce. Les, are, you going to Re- are you going to see Rex? No, I'm going to see my wife. Um, <laughs> oh, oh, shit. Hi, Casey. Tell her I'm <laughs> Les, it was nice to meet you, man. Good luck on your campaign. This is a great-looking product, man. Thank you, man. Thank you. All right. Peace out. Later. That's our boy, Doc Blaylock. I'll be playing his trailer here right after we... When we conclude, the first one I'll play will be Doc's. So that everybody get a good look at that. Um, yep. He has a noir, a noir book that's really good. 
Now, you see, we were talking about stretch goals and signature series upgrades. Mm -hmm. Bang, 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 bang. I'm telling you, the folks stretch this thing like a Vegas whore. <laughs> <laughs> you heard him, Terry. Just that, that, I mean that that first day they flat they flat gaped this campaign, my, my friend. Hey, <laughs> I'm sorry. I shouldn't say these things, but you know, it's madness. You're on the madness. You, that's see, see, see now. When, whenever I want to say something off color, I'm just gonna be like, I'm sorry. I had a stroke. I can't control myself. <laughs> I, look, I, I tell everybody ahead of time. I. I Make sure everybody's aware. You know, we put the disclaimer up. We do everything we're supposed to do, and then we be who we are. <laughs> right? That's what we do. Um, then he has a special rating. It's like TV dash IM for immature, because I, I'll tell immature jokes all day long. See, mine is MM. It's rated Monday Madness with Pop Van Zandt. <laughs> you see? You see? Um, that's <laughs> your discretion to see what is the other highly one was, advised. The, the other one was rated TV Cromcon with Pop Stacks. <laughs> that, that was the only two shows we did back then when I made this. Nice. <laughs> Pretty much, you know. Mm -mm -mm. But yeah, definitely want to talk to you about, uh, about you doing a show on the network. That would be awesome. I'm definitely interested in it. I mean, because like I say, I, I love when you do get to come hang out with us on Sundays, but I know it's not the best time for you. Yeah. Well, and and part part of what eats my time up right now is uh, uh, since the stroke, I mean, I've always been a gym rat. But yeah. since the stroke, I'm, I'm working out anywhere from two to six hours a day in the gym to force this arm to come back. Right. And it's a, right. uh, it, it's, 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 it's a, uh, it's a chore. I'll just put it that way. You know, it's, you know, they, they told me uh, February 20th of last year is when I had the stroke. February 21st, I was told I'd never walk again and I'd never use this arm again. And, uh, you know, six weeks later, I was, I was walking on a quad cane and, uh, you know, seven weeks later, I was walking without the cane. And, uh, but I mean, it was the amount of work it has taken to come back from that. I think anybody looking at it from the outside who didn't get to see everything would be like, oh, you know, I like, like, I've kind of heard murmurs from some people of, you know, it's like, oh, that it, it must not have been that bad. I'm like, no, you don't understand. It was every bit that bad. I nearly died. Like, I was, I was that close. To, uh, to shuffling off this mortal coil. And uh, it's been the bar none, the hardest thing I've ever had to do in my life is, is, is working back from this. I mean, it is insane. And I understand full well why there's statistically so many people who don't make it back from it. Yeah, you got to be strong in mind and you know, have determination and, and push, be able to push beyond your limits and just keep pushing and pushing and pushing. Yeah. Anytime you're coming back from a serious injury like that, man, um, dude, <laughs> it's, it's all um, physical therapy. And, and with that comes mental anguish where you need some, Oh, it, you know, I mean, it, and, and my, my, the doctors, um, uh, the neurologist especially, you know, talked about how uh, if I hadn't, because I'm a big martial arts nut. I've been in uh, Shotokan karate for 22 years now. And, uh, you know, he's straight up, he's like, man, he's like, karate saved your life. He's like, in numerous ways, the practice of that, the all the kinds discipline. of things. Yep. He's like, that has saved your life. And, uh, you know, I, I, you know, I talk sometimes in like stroke, stroke survivor groups online and things um, about the experience and about how I've come back as far as I have in the time that I have, you know, in, in a year. And uh, no. I, I tell, I tell them a lot that uh, I, uh, um, 
Oh, she's she's just terrible. being horrible now. Look yeah, at her. I, Look at her. I, oh my Look. god. Have, have you ever played golf in the fall? Ball goes up the fairway and goes in some leaves. You can't find it without a damn leaf blower. No, mm -hmm. no. It's easier to find that other thing. Trust me. It's gotta be <laughs> in that, it's gotta be in that one little place somewhere. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, it's, 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 it's been it's been a it's been a trip, dude. It's been a real trip. And uh you know, fortunately my uh, my occupational therapist ooh, pardon me, I gotta stretch this arm out a little bit. My O my OT says that uh based on what I've managed to do now, he actually believes that I will get full use of my hand back. That that that's quite possible and likely at this point. Nice. So for a long for a long time he doubted and a lot of people doubted and I was like, Don't care. Just keep hammering on. So Yeah, yeah. Um, look, I've been doing this for five years. You know how many people told me to quit? You know, I, I believe it. How many people are like, it's not gonna happen, Bob, it's never gonna happen, it's never gonna happen. Uh but I, I my attitude is like anything you wanna wanna accomplish, you can if you're either you gotta either be you know, determined enough or dumb enough to never give up. Yeah. And who's to say it is, but it doesn't matter in the end. It doesn't matter. You just got to keep slamming. There you go. Thank you, Miss Lou. I appreciate that. So, we yeah, have the uh, homestead. Homestead has uh, been uh, a real trip to work on, you know, and, uh, you know, when I told... Uh, I'm trying to think back because some of it gets fuzzy, but I did tell Dirk like like almost immediately as soon as they were putting me in the hospital, I was like, "Hey man, just to let you know, there may be a hiccup in production." And he's like, "Oh, what's going on?" I was like, "Oh, no, I had a stroke." <laughs> like yeah, no, nothing, no, no big deal. It's just a Thursday. <laughs> uh, see, you sound like me. It's like I, I, I just. Speed bumps, man. It's all speed bumps now. Yeah, you know, it's like, well, it didn't kill me and it didn't take away my right hand, so I'm still I'm still working. I just I, I slow down, I get I get them rear wheels high centered on top of that speed bump, <laughs> punch the gas, take just, off. Just you spin it out and keep it going. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I, I was doing uh I remember I was working on page layouts for homestead, uh as they were admitting me into the hospital, I had an iPad on my right leg and I could feel my, the left side of my body starting to just Wilt. fail. And I just kept drawing. And at one point they're putting tubes in me and I look over at the nurse and I'm like, ma'am, could I ask you to not shake me quite so much? I had to draw over here. <laughs> and, she, and she's like, what are you doing? It's like, uh, I'm working. I was like, somebody's going to pay for this shit. <laughs> It's true. It's true. Uh, and that, that it, it was kind of cool though, because when I was in the uh, the inpatient stuff for the following month, month and a half, you know, the you get to you're, you're in that long, you get to know the people there. And, you know, they they'd always come around and see what I was doing. So I was doing. You know, I'd have uh, the therapists would work with me for about three hours a day, and then I'd break the rules and skip out of my room and go down to the gym and work for another. Another three or four hours. Yes, Frazetta did. Lou Pons, Frazetta started drawing his left hand after a stroke. Yeah, and did some of his best work. I remember when they told me I was having a stroke, I was like, no factor, man. That's fine. One of my heroes, Frank Frazetta, had a stroke, had some of the best work he ever did afterwards. I was like, that's what we got to do. That's what we got to do. You know, it's just, that's just how it is. It's like, this is the thing I do. I do this. I make art. I draw. I do the thing. So, you know, it's like, there it is. So I ended up in the hospital. I'd, I'd, I'd work with the therapist for about three hours a day. And then I'd do about another three, four hours a day of work on my own. Like, it's like slipping out of the room and going down to the, 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 their little gym area or just all kinds of different stuff. And then all the other time, you know, there'd be, you know, about six to eight hours trying to get some sleep. And then every other minute, of the day would be filled with me just on my, on my iPad doing sketches and preliminary stuff and just working. I mean, just working around the clock. 
and, and it's never changed. You know, it's, I still work pretty much constantly. Yeah. That's, but, that's how I feel. It's like you, you, as soon as you slow down or as soon as you're not putting in, you know, like, dude, I, I run trying to put this network together, right? Um, there are certain days where we don't have program, you know, programming, or, or we don't have a lot of programming. Like Saturday, we have a morning show and a couple of late night shows, right? Nothing all day. I'm over here and it's like, okay, I got nothing to do. I can play some video games, right? I started feeling guilty about playing video games. Mm. Off. You know what I mean? And it was like, what did I do? I started doing the video games on the network so I wouldn't feel guilty about playing video games. <laughs> Turned it into content, right? Yep. Content is king, man. There's, you know, you could you could do, there's so many things that you can just turn into content nowadays that people actually find interesting. It's really, it's really weird. It, uh, and it's fun. We actually start, we're playing on that old D&D game, online game, you know, D &D oh, online or whatever we start, you know, I never heard of it until like, just. Ne it's, never Winter Nights? No, not Never Winter. It's actually, it's called DDO. Uh, DDO.com. It's, it's Dungeons wow. and Dragons Online. And it's open world. It's like Neverwinter, but it's, you know, actually probably more like EverQuest, original EverQuest was. Wow. That's the going raids, back a minute. You know, raids and guilds and all that, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so we started a madness guild. Cool. It's madness. Everybody who's into madness that plays that game is more welcome to join the madness guild in that game. And when we play live, yeah. Mm. Nice, uh, but yeah, it, it started because I felt guilty. <laughs> That's you know? funny, man. You're not making content pops. You're playing a video game. You're not. Well, working, I, you know, I, you know, it's been <laughs> it's been a little over a year now since I was able to play any video games because of the you know the yeah. way the controllers work. But you know, I, I got uh, one of the things I did because with all the programs I use, you know, there's key commands involved and all that. I I designed a set of pedals. I found these pedals that I could buy. They were just these USB pedals that are that have nothing coded to them. People use them for working on different kinds of inventions and different right. things like that. And uh, so I ordered a bunch of them while I was in the hospital and had them waiting when I got home. When I got home, one of the first things I did, so I hooked these pedals up to my computer and programmed them all. I figured up how many pedals I would need to cover all the key commands I needed for, uh, you know, to cover pretty much all the different programs I used for work. Right. And I had pedals waiting, program those things up, and been right back at it. What you got to do, man. You got to do. Uh, it's, it's wild, but uh, I've, I've seriously thought, uh, mm -mm. I've, I've seriously thought about uh, maybe opening up the machine to do a little bit of gaming because I know I can. Uh, I can uh, do a temporary change on the uh, yeah. On set up different macros, right? Yeah, I, I can I can change out the the coding on them as I need it to like be able to do different things. I've seriously thought about it, but uh, I, I've I've held off on it because I want to be able to do it from my controller. Like I want right. to be able to do it, you know, like I did before. And yeah. there's a component of recovery from this stuff. It's like. The more the more ways you come up with to compensate for not ha for that hand not working, the less likely it becomes that it'll come back. Well, the one thing I can say is like when, you, when I'm playing this online game, the only thing I use my left hand for is the directionals. Mm. Forward, backward, right, and left. Yep. Right? And that's the only place my hand sits the whole time. I we we got the voice thing, so we don't have to type at each other. Uh, you know, every now and then I might have to punch the I button for my inventory or the M button for the map, but that's all my left hand does. It is mm. just look around and and go forward and backward. Well, so I've been looking fingers working on just the, the arrow keys. Mm. See what I'm saying? Then your other hand, your mouse does all the other stuff the attack buttons and all the stuff on the screen that you click on your, your mouse, your right hand's doing that. Oh yeah. 
Yeah, that's on a on a computer game. Yeah, I could definitely, I could probably, I could probably wing something like that, moving the stuff to my pedals and all that. Because see, th this hand, it doesn't. Uh, the big problem with the hand right now is that it, uh, I can squeeze with it, I can grip with it, but the extensors that pull your fingers back, they're super weak from how long they've been out of commission. Right. So, so like once I close it, it just kind of stays there and like, it'll, it'll just barely move a little bit, but that, that'll get better in time. So, yeah. But in the meantime, I got books. I got books, books going on. I got and books art team going on. And a letterer, graphic designer, Dave Lentz, colorer, Colin Johnson, um, Trim and Joe, proofreading and editing. See that? See that? You gotta have a proofreader. You gotta have an editor. I don't care who you are. You gotta have somebody else's eyes looking at your stuff before. Oh you yeah. See you know. Um, and and Mr. Blackhawk was your consultant, correct? Yeah, yeah. Rao is an old friend of of Dirk's, and Rao is uh, I think three quarter, three uh, three quarter Lakota, and. Uh, yeah, he he really helped us. Like for like, I was very very intent on making sure there was a lot of authenticity in what we did. Like one of the things that we were talking about the other night on another stream was how uh, you know, everybody thinks this kind of stuff. You know, they think werewolf, Native American. They're like, oh, skinwalkers. Well, the Lakota don't have skinwalkers in their their culture. They're one of the few who don't. But. There are other things that uh, that come to play that that allow us to authentically pull in their culture and do this story with it, <clears throat> without you know slapping the skinwalker trope onto them where it shouldn't be. So, and and Ral really provided a lot. He also helped me find a lot of good reference for things. So, like you know, there's pages in this where you'll see a, a Lakota. Uh, tribal council and I was very meticulous about the, the authenticity of what was going into all that you just want to stop it we're in a really mm -hmm. cool spot right about there oh and uh, that cover that cover <laughs> the, I, I think I can say this now I think we've unlocked it that is actually half the cover yeah, I've seen that. Um, the the it's a wraparound now. Yeah, yeah. The wraparound has the uh, the other half of it shows. There's like a wolf overlooking a uh, a kind of a grade coming up the hill with the family and the covered wagon coming up the hill. And uh, the next stretch goal was also interesting. What's the 14,000? Come on, tell me about it. Oh, Lord, see. I believe at 14K, you get a silver uh, bookmark. Yes! A silver ribbon so, bookmark. In yeah, the that, that's at 14. Oh. You're good. You're still here. Oh. Oh, maybe not. Lost his audio. So I can still see you, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll be over real quick. We'll be done. <laughs> Can't hear you, brother. Can't hear you. <laughs> yeah, your audio has gone. Yeah, the audio has gone. Um, but look, we covered everything, right? Right? 
We covered everything. We're good. We covered everything, right? <laughs> I'm sorry, dude. I don't know what happened. <laughs> I do not know what happened to his audio. Can you guys hear me? Is everything gone? What happened? Somebody in the chat talked. Talked. I, I tried to let him know. Um, <laughs> Hmm. Okay, you can hear me, so it's him. He can't, we can't hear him. Okay. Um, I see it looked like they had a little power flicker or something happened there, and then couldn't hear him no more. We'll give him a minute. See what's up. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and play this trailer again while he's gone. Let me think can do that. I actually want to talk about somebody else too here before we leave. Yeah, let's, let's watch this again. <laughs> Hello friends, I'm Dirk Manning, the writer and co-creator of Homestead. And I'm Wes Garner, co-creator and artist on Homestead. Homestead is a Native American Western werewolf graphic novel about how far two families will go to protect their way of life and their loved ones. Joining Les and I on this project are colorist Colin Johnson, letterer Dave Lenz, Lakota creative consultant Ralph Blackhawk, editor Rita Joe, and of course, publisher SourcePoint Press. As always, friends, thank you so much for supporting the projects that I'm involved with, with my amazing collaborators, and thank you for supporting Good Horror. I don't have to call, hold up card. I'll just put that up there, Carrie. She. <laughs> I don't need no cards. So, yeah, um, I did want to talk about somebody else, somebody else who happened to uh, just launch a little while ago. And, you know, um, now she does these ninja launches because she – she don't do the live stream launches anymore. Where she's, I love her. She's awesome. Check it out, guys. It's issue nine of Worthy Chaos. Issue nine. I met, I met Carissa in October of 22. October of 22. She had, she was on her first book. It is now. February or March of 23, and she's launching her ninth book. She also did a reprint of one of the books, and look, <coughs> putting in the work, people. Go check that out. Worthy Chaos number nine. A lot of you already know all about it. So you got no audio, no audio. <laughs> we can't hear you. <laughs> All right, so what we're going to do is, <laughs> holy shit, Perry, be nice. <laughs> All right, 
It's all right, brother. It's all right. I'm going to pop off and come oh, back in. Oh, there he in. is. Look, now I can hear you. There you go. Let's see if that fixes this. I can, I can hear you now. Hold up. I can hear you now. You can't hear me either, huh? Wow. See? Wait. Wow. That was crazy. I don't think he can hear me. Hmm. Well, then. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you say you go pop out, pop back in, see if it fixes it. But if we can't get it to work, hell, we're pretty, I think we pretty much covered everything, dude, as far as the campaign goes. So, uh, I like what Les does. It's amazing. Better. Can you hear me now? Yeah, that's better. Okay, okay. I was gonna say it's like we. I, I'm pretty sure we covered pretty much everything, right? <laughs> uh, I think so. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah. Now the one, like you said, the one thing I always like to make sure that anybody that comes on the show, if there was something I didn't bring up that they wanted to talk about, I like to make sure that they get this last opportunity to bring that up because I never want somebody to leave my show and then go. Oh man, yeah. I didn't well, talk yeah. about this. I didn't get to talk about that. You know what I mean? Well, I, I would I would like to invite people to make sure they catch up with me on uh, Facebook primarily. That's primarily where I'm active. Um, trying to use Twitter X a little bit more, but I just Facebook is is kind of where the majority of my interaction happens at. So, and you can put my name in, you'll get, the, you'll probably find my personal profile, which is fine. There's a page called Les Garner Artist. That's an official page, or you can follow the Apocalypse Girl page, but any of the pages that come up with my name are, are going to be, going to be solid. I have a couple of things coming up um, here in maybe another couple of months after we finish fulfillment on reign of dracula will be launching for part two of reign of dracula so that's that's a whole thing coming down the pipe uh and then uh, some some little little tasty tidbits coming that i'm really really hoping y'all will will follow along and help me front load them is uh if you've seen, did you see uh, the the book called Prometheus in Chains? Yes. Yeah, it was that was from Rich Davis, and uh, yeah. well, I did the covers for that. I did uh, how many covers? I did twelve covers for that. Actually, I did more than twelve covers. There are twelve covers that got released that I did for that, and there was a whole pile of other stuff I did for it for different promos and different things, and all told, it ended up being. I think I ended up with like 30 something pieces of artwork for that. And we've gotten the go ahead to compile all of that into a really nice art book. Nice. And, uh, the, uh, yeah, that, that's kind of, kind of neat because what we're going to do with that is, uh, there'll be like, say, say we'll, we'll, we'll have one cover and then on the overleaf to it will be, notes from myself about it notes from rich on what he wanted for it and maybe some other little tidbits with it so yeah there's going to be all kinds of stuff i think we're also going to be in there we'll be printing a lot of them in their black and white form along with the color plate so it you, know, you really can see the stuff in in the different ways then there there's there's a ton of stuff with us I ended up, I always do this. I always end up doing a lot more for things than is really needed. So uh, anyway, if you uh, you follow along with me, you'll see it pretty soon. I'm going to start promoting for that. And I think we're going to be doing a Kickstarter for it and then probably uh, fund my comic for this cool. art book. Then what else have I got? Let's see. Uh, there's a book I'm working on that is a one shot about Elizabeth Bathory. That's kind of a, a semi-historical sexy vampire thing. Then uh, what else? Oh, Lord. Um, I'm right now working on nine pages for a horror anthology 
from uh, 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 Scott Snyder. So that's kind of a cool one. Yeah, the uh, and uh, the the writer on it is uh, Anna. Oh, she's going to kill me because I cannot remember her last name off the top of my head. I can see like the last three letters of it enough to remember how hard it is for me to pronounce it. <laughs> but uh, but uh, she's a great writer, and uh, she was part of Scott's workshop and all this kind of stuff, and that ended up opening a door. There's all all kinds of. <laughs> horror, I think. Yes, horror, horror, roar, 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 roar. There you go. <laughs> but uh, anyway, so I'm working on that. Uh, a couple of non-comic book things I have coming up. They're sort of non-comic. I say sort of because they tie into some projects that are comic book projects. I hope to get off the ground later. But these come first. Uh, one of them, I just finished, good God, I just finished upwards of 60 pieces of artwork for a, uh, this is all digital painting, for a uh, a board game called Auto Clash that is, it's wild. So that there's a whole bunch of stuff going on with that. That's going to be some months down the line before anybody gets a look at that, but it's, it's super cool. Um, and my personal pet project that I just finished up the artwork to is a tarot deck based on, uh, the works of HB Lovecraft. And it's wild. It, it's, it's based on, now this is where it gets kind of meta. It's a, a, tarot deck based on the world of H.P. Lovecraft as seen through the eyes of a character who I've written a bunch of short stories for. So it, it, there's there, it's a tarot deck with a story that then plays into other stories that I've written and those some of those stories are going to go into an art book that accompanies the tarot deck and yeah it's, it's a whole thing. But uh, that's I'm working on right now on building the uh, the website and campaign and all kinds of stuff for that, and uh, so that's probably the Prometheus art book will probably be the next thing that I that I that I'm going live with. I'd say that that's probably about a month or two off, and then hot on the heels of that will come the tarot deck, and I think the tarot deck. So far, I've been selling prints of some of the artwork to it, and. Uh, Women in particular, ladies, are loving it. So, and it's a totally different look than any oh, kind of artwork. Ladies watching, so. Hey, y'all. <laughs> All we got is ladies watching, so, you know. Um, there you go. You're in the right spot, brother. Ladies night in the madness, man. <laughs> well. We, we love our female creatives. Um, Carissa, Lori, Perry. Lou, they all kick ass, man. They're all uh, producing. I really, good I food. really dig. I, I, I know Carissa's stuff. I've, I've talked to her a little bit and done a little bit of work for her on the back end of some things, and uh, really, really would love to do a couple of covers for her sometime. Mm -hmm. If y'all interested, there you go, Carissa. You know what's up. Um, I met her. I want to say sixteen months ago at the end of her first campaign. Like with two days left on her first book, and mm. been promoting her ever since. She's awesome. got some good, good looking stuff there, dude. She just dropped number nine. She yep. dropped number nine. People, get with it. Get with the worthy chaos redemption because that is solid. Yeah, I mean, I love mm -mm. it. She's killing it. You know, and you're welcome. Look, thank you. you it's, you're providing me with entertainment. <laughs> you know, that's. Remember, I owe you. You're providing me with entertainment. Otherwise, mm -hmm. I'm sitting over here when the lights go out with nothing to read. <laughs> <laughs> That's when I read comics, less when the power goes out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's the perfect time, right? It's like you light a couple candles, nobody's going to interrupt you. There's no, you don't have any idea when the power is going to come back on. So you just grab that reader stack and you go to it. You know? Oh, yeah. Um, I like it, and we live out in booty, so it happens fairly often. You know, probably a couple times a month that we lose power for some 
amount of time. So mm -hmm. that's when I read comics. <laughs> I've got I've got a, a I got the comic book couch. That's that's a in, in my studio here. There's a couch yeah. across the room from me. That's couch coffee table, and that's that's where I sit and read stuff whenever I get a chance to. My spot's right there behind me. This mm -hmm. when I'm sitting here, I'm working. Okay, if I sit in the chair in front of the computer, I'm doing my thing, sharing or doing shows or setting up shows or you know some kind of something. That's I get out of the chair. But only you know, like reading comics is for when the power goes out. That's yeah. my, that's my time, right? It's like the rest of the time I read read regular stuff, mm. you know, regular books, novels. You know, yeah. I don't ever want to stop doing that either. I, I don't want to stop reading either. So I read both. And, you know. Oh yeah. Time for it. You know. Yeah. Time for it. That's, yeah. The. That that's that's probably one of the sadder parts for me of, of doing the amount of work that I do as an artist is I don't really have as much time anymore to actually sit down and enjoy comics like I would like. So that's that's kind of a thing. But you know, I love making them. So that's that's kind of what I'm saying. When when the pressure of not having to work is off, like the power mm -hmm. goes off, I can't promote nobody's not nothing, can't do no shows, can't do nothing, computers off, right? Mm-hmm. Then I, I can do all, all that I want on, on the reading comics end of it. And, you know, this that's why I save them. If, if I read them every day, then I, I wouldn't have none when the power goes out. You know? I, I am. I have actually thought about this. And uh, I think I know when I'm going to start catching up on all my reading. I, I know when that's going to happen. And that's deer season. Because when deer season comes... You know, I'll be sitting in a deer blind for many hours at a time. And if I head out there, if I go out there now and I build myself a little box inside that where I can keep my comics safe in the deer deer blind, I could probably go ahead and stash myself a bunch of readers out there and be ready to roll. Yeah, yeah. Um, look, <laughs> it's funny because November, November, the uh, Grand Rapids Comic Con usually falls on the same week weekend that deer season opens mm. oh that's cold that's cold that, that, that is a, that is a fickle mistress right there man i can't because <laughs> uh, and th this this is this is th this is my my uh my uh my my triumph over the stroke story probably one of my favorite ones is uh two weeks after i got out of the hospital i went turkey hunting and didn't get anything, but the whole point was to see if I could do it. And I told the doctors when I, you know my next visit, I was like, "Yeah, I went turkey hunting." They're like, "You what?" I was like, "Well, I didn't get anything." I was like, "That's practice for deer season." He, he said, "Well, I didn't get anything." They're, they're <laughs> not why so, they were going. What? <laughs> but then November came around. <laughs> November came around, and I made the hike out to the deer blinds just fine. Left hand can't really hold the the right. the, the rifle up. So I put together a tripod set up in the deer blind and I'm looking out this way because I'm like, okay, I know they, they tend to go through the field over here. That's where they're probably going to go. So I'm set up on the tripod and I'm ready. I got a, 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 a Barrett, a Barrett 450 running 308s through it. That's a, that's a hefty, that's a hefty damn rifle. Mm -hmm. I'm sitting there. I'm like, okay, okay, okay. And then I hear them off to the side. I'm like, you bastards. I'm like, you're over there. So I'm sitting there with this Barrett. And I'm just, and I'm like, if I break this down and try to set up, they're going to be gone. And I'm yeah. going to make a bunch of noise. And I was like, you got one shot. So I'm like, literally with one hand, I'm gripping that thing. Sounds, sounds like BS, but it's not. I've got the meat in my freezer to prove it. And the one hand on that Barrett, I go up, turn, drop in my sights, pop, got one. One handed with a Barrett 450 shooting 308s. Nice, nice. And that's, I'm like, that, that right there, the best meat I've ever eaten in my life. I mean, I, I went out, I got that deer, I dragged it onto my, my buddy's, uh, had a buddy in the field across from me 
He brought his little side by side over, dragged it up into the back of it. We carted that thing up to my house, strung it up behind the house, and I, I cleaned it, gutted it, and butchered it right then. Two hours later, I was eating on that deer. We have a uh, friend in the network that has an affiliate show called Big Sexy Outdoors. <laughs> oh, God. And that's they interview hunters and stuff. Oh, that's it's, cool. It's, it's another show you might want to consider going on, bro. Because <laughs> Oh, that'd be wild, man. Chris is also a comic creator and a, and a you know, a game creator. He's the one that created the RPG that we play on Fridays. Oh, cool. Waterville game. Nice. The one, the one that uh, Lou's art is, is inspired by. This this is from hmm. the Slaughterville RPG. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, uh, you, you got to get with Chris. You might want to go out and hang out with the people on Big Sexy Outdoors. It's, that it's, might be kind of cool. Cause I, yeah. I, got, I got plans this year. I'm like, okay. All right. It's like I'm, I'm my, my hands back my arm, like at the time the deer season came around, this arm did nothing. Like from here down, there was so little movement in that arm. But now, you know, I've got a lot back and uh, I actually use this hand for lots of things now. Just not, not articulate things, but it's getting there. And I'm right. thinking, you know, see, this is March. So by November, by November, this arm may be back well enough that I can actually shoot two handed. God, that'd be nice. Yeah, That's so nice. So, and uh, and I've got thirteen guitars hanging on the wall behind me over here. But I know that's killing you too. Isn't and it? I, I just, I mean, some days I just stop and take one down and put it in that hand and hold it, and just sit there and hold it and concentrate, just seeing if I can get those fingers to move a little bit. And like eventually, you know, my my girl Janice, you know, she's like, man, she's like, this is. You're just giving her too much. You're giving her too much material. Oh my god! Yes, I mean, <laughs> man, not these days. You know, just, I can't even get get a good stranger out of that thing right now. But, <laughs> you know, Gee, you asked for it, Gary. You got it. <laughs> uh, I, I I I knew I knew somebody was going to go there. <laughs> yeah, my girl said. She's watched the watch my 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 build back from this, and she said we were watching Kill Bill one day because uh, I love Kill Bill movies, and it got to the part with that whole thing about wiggle your big toe, and huh? she looks at me, she goes, you know, I always thought that was bullshit. It's like no, no, yeah. that's I mean, because literally in the hospital, I, there's a point where I'm literally looking down at my foot, and I said to her, I was like, honey, I'm about to Kill Bill this shit. That's that's just that's all there is to it. We're kill Bill in this shit. So that's gonna roll. <laughs> Les is always great talking to you, man. You gotta get I appreciate you guys, it, man. Get, get dirt to come out with you again before it ends. Yep. Sometime during the month, both of you come out again on one of the shows, so, uh, like Doc Show or something. You know. Go. Cool. Yeah. I'll, but, I'll, but I mean, whatever works for dirt. If we have to do a special edition, whatever, I don't care. I'll um, push on it. Make sure you guys set us up sometime before it's over, so we can come out and, and yep. talk about it again. You know. Yeah, pre pretty much any time that's in the evening like this is actually like, like right now th this time of evening, I usually am in the gym, just you know, doing medieval crap to myself. So, but I, I took the night off just for you guys. No, Carrie, I said Dirk. Dirk, be nice now. Come on. <laughs> don't 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 confuse Dirk with Dick. Mm, two, mm, different, mm. two entirely different people. Okay. <laughs> mm, 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 mm. Yeah, I said Dirk. D I R K. Dirk. Not Dirk. <laughs> <That's right>. Dirk. <laughs> <laughs> so now we've got we've got Dirk's dick and the horror horrors. I don't know. This is terrible. Know. It's madness. I'm telling it's you. Terrible. It's terrible. That, that's why he's not on here. He's like, I can't be a part of this immaturity, you guys. <laughs> it's just madness. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> As always, though, like I said, it's crazy. always good to see you, man. I'm looking forward to the next time for sure. Oh, there's, there's say, plenty more coming. Check out Homestead. It looks freaking awesome. Thank you. you know? Thank you very much. And 
And uh, thank you to anybody watching who's already backed it. And if you haven't backed it, what are you waiting for? We've got a lot of good stuff up there. And, uh, you know, this thing is hot. This yeah. thing this thing is hot and moving. And get in on it, man. Jump, jump, because the more of those stretch goals, trust me, I, I know Dirk has got – it's actually – he's caught me off guard with some of the stretch goals that fired off on this. It's it, like – there are times I'm like, man, I just draw the damn thing. I don't know what's going on. You know. <laughs> hey, that's what you do. Um, thanks for watching, everybody. Y'all go check out Homestead. Go check out Carissa's book. Go check out everybody's books, man. That's just buy comics. All right. it. Later, y'all. How do you end this thing? How do you put the where there was the brakes on this bus? I forgot. Jazz hands. Jazz hands are